the whole concept of sanctions is extremely counterintuitive in a situation where you have an authoritarian regime, right? So the whole goal of sanctions is to put pressure on the general populace to eventually achieve behavior modification from the regime. But in a situation where the Taliban have unfortunately uh, achieved total victory and they are here, um, there's no way the general populace can influence the Taliban's behavior. So all that you're doing is making them suffer. And at the end of the day, the question here is, are we going to make millions of Afghans starve for the grander politics of things? Because there's a huge misconception with regards to the unfreezing money as well. And when I wrote a piece for the Washington Post highlighting the need for aid for Afghanistan, I did mention that it wouldn't get solved unless structural changes are done, unless the economy is revived. And that happens with the $9.4 billion, the lion's share of which is in the US, uh, is released into the economy because this... And, and my issue was I had the misconception that people understood that Afghan Federal Reserves meant Afghan Federal Reserves, right? And the comments that I got on that piece was a lot of the people that were commenting there thought that the money that was being released was US taxpayer money that was being given to the Taliban, right? And that's not true because at the end of the day, the fact that we stand in line, start standing in line at 4 a.m. in the morning only to get 400 bucks at 2 p.m. in the day is showing you that we have no access to our own money that is upon federal reserves. So at the end of the day, unless that money is re released, and I think the 0.5 billion that are in Switzerland and the 0.6 billion that are in two banks in Germany, they seem to be releasing sometime soon, but it really hurts the momentum that we're trying to generate for unfreezing the money when we have previous Republic elites going around using much larger influential circles to advocate for further sanctions. We saw Iraq, you have the example of Iran. These are both authoritarian regimes where the, the, the governance or the regime barely ever feels the pain of the sanctions. It's the common people that end up paying a price. And that in a situation where Afghanistan is already facing a drought, where the collapse of the regime means the institutions are gone, means that there's huge joblessness. And those that who have jobs, aren't getting paid. I am a lecturer that has barely gotten paid in three months. I don't know why I'm teaching. Maybe it's just because I'm a really good person. But that just shows you the challenges that common Afghans are facing. At the end of the day, they have to go back and, and feed their families. 